Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. If we want to all do it together, we can even respond, the Lord is risen indeed. When I say Christ is risen, the Lord is risen indeed. Let's try it again. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. I want to hear it back from the narthex back there. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. I think I heard some from back there. Wonderful. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. A few things for you this morning as we gather and worship. If you've not done so already, please sign the friendship register at the end of your pew. Pass it down. Make sure you learn the names of those that you're sharing the pew with. If you're worshiping with us online, please take a moment to say hello to those worshiping with you virtually. Also, too, if you have not looked on your bulletin, there's a few announcements of things coming up this week. If you would turn to the back at the bottom, you'll see a couple offerings. One of those needs a subtle correction on Thursday. The blood drive is from 10 to 3. It was back and forth with the coordinators, and so what you have in your bulletin is a little bit outdated, and we know for sure now through Joe James uh, that it is from 10 to 3. Those of you who have signed up online should be fine. Uh, no worries, and thank you for supporting that good effort. If you have not done so already, uh, by May 1st, uh, we will need your nominations for the nominating committee. If you have a few people in mind that you'd like to nominate, we only ask that you reach out to them before nominating them so that when the nominating committee that will be bringing this to the congregation can bring the names, they are confident that the people who they are bringing have said yes. Does that make sense? So please, uh, if you have some names, you want to put those down, check with the people you're nominating. If they say yes, they'd be willing to serve. Put their name down, and it goes in the box back there in the narthex. Last but not least, we have been preparing for a special offering in the church, one great hour of sharing offering. I'd like to read to you a little bit uh, before we continue in our worship what this offering is about. You'll see special envelopes in the pew there in front of you uh, if you'd like to make a gift to the One Great Hour of Sharing that supports not only hunger programs and disaster programs, but also the self-development of people programs of the Presbyterian Church USA. Hear this. Imagine living in a wealthy country, working as a family to survive, and still feeling like help never finds you. Unfortunately, many of us understand that experience all too well. Mr. Swade, a farmer living in northeastern Nigeria, shares that experience. The 50-year-old says, I do nothing more than farming, and my wife does petty trading so that our family can eat. We live in a place where help never finds us, and that is despite Nigeria's annual ranking among Africa's wealthiest nations. He continues, the program co coordinator for the Civil Society Coalition and Poverty Eradication says this, even though Nigeria is one of the wealthiest oil producing countries in the world with an abundance of natural resources, the money just doesn't go where it needs to go, he continues. Together we as the church seek to address poverty with our neighbors here in various places and with our neighbors in places like Nigeria, says our denomination. Our gifts to One Great Hour of Sharing connect us with our siblings in Nigeria through programs and partnerships, and they serve Nigeria's most vulnerable populations, especially women, by acting as an agent of change. One Great Hour of Sharing connects all of us, and it is the single largest way that Presbyterians come together to work for a better world, advancing the causes of justice, resilience, and sustainability. During Lent, we celebrate that God connects us through Jesus' resurrection and connects us with those who have the least. That's how Matthew 25 puts it, and that's what one great hour of sharing is all about. Thank you for your generosity, and as always, when we do a little, it all adds up to a lot. Let us continue in our worship, honoring God and rejoicing together in the great things that God has done. Let us hear now the sounding of the Trinity and remain in our responsiveness to the congregational introit.
This is the day of resurrection. Christ is risen. The stone has been rolled away. Christ is risen indeed. Let us continue in our worship with the call to confession. We have always needed a savior. We've always wanted a Messiah. We've been given Christ who is both savior and Messiah. Let us pray. Let us pray together our prayer of confession, leaving time for silent prayer afterwards. On this Easter morning, we come as sinners seeking forgiveness and restoration. Our lives have not always sought to bless creatures and creation. We have not always loved Christ as his love. We have sought to protect our possessions above the concerns of those around us. Forgive us for our casual faith. Remind us of the goals of the kingdom, to share abundant life, to love others, and to worship you always, O God. Amen. Alleluia and amen. The love of God surrounds us and fills us. God's grace overflows in us. May God's forgiveness move us forward in faith and faithfulness. May God's grace be shared by your forgiveness and our gratitude. Those who are able, please stand. Please be seated. If the children would like to come forward, I have a short children's message for us here at the Chancel Steps. All right, so Merry Christmas. I hope y'all have gotten some good presents this morning. Santa came to... That's right. Oh. That must be why Mitzi gave me an egg on the way out of the house. I, I thought it was a kind of a strange gift, actually. So um, there's an Easter story, right? Yes. One about Jesus not being where he was supposed to be, something like that. Like they put him in a tomb, and he was supposed to be in a tomb, but they rolled the stone away, and he wasn't in the tomb. Does that sound familiar? No. Oh. Well, that is the story. <laughs> when they go to the tomb, those who go in the morning, and they don't find him there, what, what reaction do you think they might have had? You know, were they surprised, not surprised, shocked? Eh? If you go somewhere and you expect something and you don't see that, how does that normally sound if you react? Any kind of... There you go, there you go. Perfect. Just in case you couldn't come up with that, I came prepared with an egg. Because I thought, you know, Easter and eggs and stuff would be fun. What's inside of an egg? No, a chicken's not inside. What? Yolk, right? Right. And I was worried y'all wouldn't be prepared for surprise. And so I thought if I smashed an egg over one of your heads during worship, that would get a lot of surprise. It might even get some surprise from grandparents who were going, I can't believe he just did that. And it might be my last Sunday here. I don't know. 
but I thought it's worth doing. Because if we don't get that surprise, then the Easter story just, it doesn't have that flavor, that, that pop. Because Christ is risen. Yeah, see? So what do you think? Can we, I'm, I'm thinking Ruth is a good candidate for this. She's the oldest. Yeah. So it's, it's going to happen. And um, we do have extended family here, so this may not be good. But I want you to watch. And when, when, the, when the yoke comes out, I want you to really kind of get that. <gasps> okay? Because it, it may be the last time I hear that from you all. All right? All right. You ready? But you're not wearing a, a, a fancy dress like Avery is. So, so this be good. All right, you ready? Oh, that was, a, that was a funny egg. It didn't have any yolk in it. And y'all didn't gasp. <laughs> the idea didn't work. I was trying to recreate that sense of people going to look for a Jesus that wasn't risen. And I wanted to see how it would feel if we actually had that sense in here today. If we really celebrated Christ is risen, what would it be like? We'd be excited. We'd be encouraged. We might even gasp a few times. Wow, this is hard work. This is tough. Well, I'm going to just say that y'all should be like me today and be more excited, and we'll leave it at that. And hopefully you'll get some excitement later in the day, um, but right now it may just still be a little bit too early. All right, let us have a prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for this day, and we thank you that Christ is risen this day, that his being risen raises us to a new life with you. Bless us and send us, love us, O oh God. In Christ we pray, amen. You may go in peace. Thank you for being a good sport, Ruth. I admit it was a bad yoke, but... Uh. Let us pray. May God's word grow in our hearts and in our lives from the reading of God's word this day. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes to us from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 65. For I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind, but be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it or the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant that lives but a few days or an old person who does not live out a lifetime. For one who dies at a hundred years will be considered a youth. And one who falls short of a hundred will be considered accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be. And my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity. For they shall be offspring blessed by the Lord and their descendants as well. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, but the serpent, its food shall be dust. They shall not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, says the Lord. The word of God from the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our second lesson comes to us from the New Testament, the Gospel according to Luke, a story which is hopefully familiar, if not almost recalled from memory. On the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared, and they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body while they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes 
stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all of this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. Friends, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I want to tell you a story. It was Friday, early morning in the inner city, and I heard a sound, not too far away, a sound so crisp and clear, so melodic, it cut through the air that seemed filthy by comparison. Rags, rags! Ah, oh, the voice, so clear, unmistakable. I had to find out where it was coming from. So I kept moving towards the sound, and there he was, a ragman up ahead, strong and muscular, Young and vibrant, rags, rags, new rags for old, give me your tired rags. My curiosity, I wonder, was there no other job that a, a young man like this could find nothing else in the inner city for him to do? I had to keep following him to see where he would go, like a child chasing a mystery. I was not disappointed. Soon the rag man pulling his cart behind him with rag upon rag, new rags in his cart, came upon this young child who was sobbing in a handkerchief. After he made his way through some broken glass and discarded toys, the rag man walked up to her and said, give me your handkerchief and I'll give you one of mine. Such quiet authority in his voice. The child's sobbing into the handkerchief had stained it so completely, but the ragman took a new rag out of his cart and gave it to the young girl and took her rag for himself. Now what I saw next, that will surprise you just as it surprised me. For as the ragman walked away, he put the handkerchief to his face and he started sobbing uncontrollably just as grievously as she had been doing and her face was left without a tear. What a mystery, what a wonder, this ragman. Rags, rags, new rags for old. I kept following, I couldn't stop now. The ragman sobbing now came upon another young woman. This woman was wrapped head in a bandage, bloody from a wound underneath. The ragman saw her and grabbed a, a yellow bonnet out of his cart. And walking up to her, approached her and said, Give me your rag, and I will give you mine. And what happened next is almost hard to believe. If I hadn't seen it, I would never believe it. But as he unwrapped the bandage from her head and placed the yellow bonnet on it, then placed her bandage on his, the wound went with the bandage. Now there was blood coming down the ragman's forehead, deep, dark, red blood. It was his own. I could not put words to what I was seeing. Rags, rags, said the weeping, bleeding, strong, intelligent ragman. I kept following him. He came upon a, a man who was leaning against a pole, and as he was leaning against the pole, the ragman approached him and said, Do you have work? And the man shook his head, and, and the ragman pressed a bit further, saying, Do you have a job? 
And the man came away from the pole revealing a, a slack sleeve on his coat. No arm was in it. His cuff was tucked into his pocket. The rag man, again with authority in his voice, said to him, Give me your coat, and I will give you mine. And the ragman took off his coat, and as he was doing so, the arms went with the coat. And as the man put it on, he had two strong, muscular ragman arms. And as the ragman took his coat, he walked away with but one arm, pulling the cart. I had to race to keep up with him now. Even sobbing and bleeding, the ragman was picking up his pace through the day. And he came upon a man who was lying under an old army blanket, wizened and sick and old. The ragman bent down and took his blanket and left him a stack of new and bright clothes. Now the ragman was moving so quickly now I had to run to keep up with him. He was moving through the city streets so quickly. The, the sobbing ragman, bleeding from the forehead, Stumbling over himself out of drunkenness, one-armed ragman pulling his cart. I had to see where he was going. I had to find out what it was that drove him so. And I followed him all the way to the edge of the city where he moved beyond and into the landfill, into the garbage pits. I wanted to help him in what he did, but, but I held back not knowing what to do as the ragman made his way up a, a mountain and pile of trash. He made his way to the top and he cleared a space at the top and took a handkerchief and a jacket and folded them into a pillow. And then he laid down on top of that pile of trash and covered himself with an army blanket and he died. The ragman died. I had come to love him. All the other faces that I had seen had faded before him. But there he died, and I mourned as one who had no hope. I found an old abandoned car off to the side, and I crawled into it, and I sobbed myself to sleep through Friday, through Saturday morning, into Saturday night. How could I have known that I was asleep that long? But then on Sunday morning, a bright light, an intrusive, harsh, demanding light awoke me, searing my sour face. And I opened my eyes, and there I saw it. The last and first wonder of them all. It was the rag man standing and folding bright new rags, gleaming white upon white. He had a scar on his forehead, but no blood. He was young and healthy again. And I knew what I must do. I started to approach the rag man. I was a sorry figure beside him. I told him my name, and then I undressed right there in front of him, and I looked at him, and I said, Dress me. Put new rags on me. And he did. Oh, he put new rags on me. And I'm a wonder beside him. The rag man. The rag man. The Christ. Let us pray. Gracious God, you find us in so many places and settings and circumstances. Do we always recognize you? We know you recognize us. In our moments of uncertainty, in our moments when we do not see you as you are, in our moments of confusion and haste, Call to us once again, and may you find us, cleanse us, clothe us, and redeem us. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. I invite those who are able to stand as we join together in our affirmation of faith. The Apostles' Creed is printed for you in your bulletin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, choir. Let us pray. Oh God, it is the day of resurrection, the day when we remember and retell the story of surprise and wonder when the one who was crucified could not be held by death, when the stone was rolled away and the tomb was found empty, preparing the way for experiences of those who had walked and known an earthly Christ to walk with him again post-resurrection. Oh God, you are still active in this world. This is not a, a story of centuries past set and fixed in a time we can no longer access. This is how you are in the world today. And you've invited the church to be a partner in resurrection moments, large and small. We are called to see with eyes of hope, not bound by the timeline of birth and death, but a timeline ever more expansive beyond our wildest imaginations into eternity itself. We are called to be a people who see past the thousands of deaths that we have in our own daily living, things that come and go, to make a space for new things which will happen, new things that you are calling forth. We are called to be a people who lean heavily into the promises of the cross, not as a promise for one, but as a promise for all. We are called to be your covenant people, trusting always more in your promises than any promise we can make for or to ourselves. This is the day of resurrection. This is the day when all the things that we thought were true are rendered false 
in light of your goodness and your promise, we see the world in a glimpse as you see it always. Fill us with your spirit, unite us, call us once again, and hold us as your people as we serve the world as the body of Christ, the church. Strengthen us in all gifts. Wipe away all the pride among us that might interfere with our good efforts in your name. Call us in togetherness in a way that represents the diverse tapestry of your family and remind us that patience and strength go together in serving you. Hear us, O God, as we join our voices together in prayer, using the words Jesus taught the disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we prepare for the receiving of the offering, let us join together. Our life is not our own. It is a gift from God to be used for the glory of God. Let us present to God the gifts of our life and labor. say thy strength indeed is small child of weakness watch and pray find in me thine all in all Jesus paid it all all to him I owe sin had left a crimson stain he washed it white as snow Lord now indeed I find thy power and thine alone can change the leper spots and melt the heart of stone. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Nothing good have I Whereby thy grace to claim I wash my garments white In the blood of Calvary's Lamb Jesus paid it all All to him I owe Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow.
Gracious God, we offer our very selves to you all that we are, all that we have been, and all that we might become, so that we might serve you daily in this kingdom that you have blessed not only creation with, but us as well. In Christ we pray. Amen. Christ is risen. See, you waited a little bit. You waited just, you paused, you hesitated. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Christ is risen indeed. This is a world that is made alive through a risen Lord, a risen Savior. We do not worship an empty tomb. We worship the one who walks alongside us, who meets us in places like Emmaus, breaking bread, or on a seashore, cooking some fish over a fire. We serve a risen Lord. Your responsibility, and mine as well, is to help the world see where he is and to make sure that he's not working alone. He's called us to work with him, alongside him. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. May the grace, love, peace, and joy and fellowship of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us and bind us together this day and always. Amen. Following worship, if you have flowers or want to go outside, immediately outside the, the stained glass windows there, we will be gathering out there briefly to place some flowers on the cross. You may be seated. Go in peace.